I knew eventually I was going to have to leave New York, one way or another, forced to or otherwise. And at some point I became fascinated with Poland Springs water bottles. I just started to think about how many hundreds of thousands, how many millions were used every day in the city. And the water is fine in New York. It's delicious right out of the tap. But all these water bottles, where'd they end up? I collected them pretty quickly. It didn't take long. I just go down the park every once in a while and get some. And in a matter of weeks, I had more than enough to make my boat. Here's the plans for my boat. As you can see, they're highly detailed and architecturally sound. After I had all the bottles and materials, the construction of the boat took about 10 hours, and I did it in my apartment. The reason I built this boat was to escape New York in case of catastrophe. I wanted to make a boat that anybody could make with some simple materials, recycled and otherwise. And that way they can escape the catastrophe that's bound to happen at some point, whether real or imagined. Now just about anybody can build themselves a boat out of Poland Spring water bottles. It's not that hard. If you need to find out how to do PVC construction, you can look it up online. Collecting your bottles won't take long. And then building it, like I said, 10 to 12 hours. It is time consuming though. So be ready. But before I built my boat, I was talking to a friend, Alan. And he reminded me, well this isn't Alan, this is Archimedes. But we started talking about Archimedes and water displacement. And I discovered I didn't have enough buoyancy and I was going to need more. So I added two five gallon water bottles to my overall design. In addition, the Hudson River is very cold. So if you were to put a closed bottle of water in the Hudson River, once it cooled down, well the air would be condensed. Therefore the buoyancy of the boat would be less. So what I had to do with each bottle was put it in a freezer while it was unopened and then cap it after it was in the freezer for a while so that it had maximum buoyancy when it hit that cold water. Here's the boat completed bit by bit, held together by zip ties, packing tape with wine corks as additional buoyancy. The day of the actual test run was beautiful. I had some friends, Andy and Laura helped me out, and got up at dawn basically and ran down to the river to test out the boat and make sure everything was going to be okay. I didn't know if it would float or not and here I just tested the buoyancy of it to make sure that yes I would float. concerned about being considered a terrorist floating up to the GWB and the George Washington Bridge in a craft of dubious intent. I was a little afraid. I almost wrapped myself in an American flag but thought that would probably make me look more like a terrorist. When I got in the river, the current was fine, flat, and calm. There's, the tide was at its peak. But as soon as I started floating down, the, the tide started to increase greatly. I barely managed to pull out of that tide, the current. It was ripping there towards the end. And if I was five minutes later, there was no way I would have been able to pull out at the lighthouse. And here you can see the current about five minutes after I pulled out. And it's very, very fast at this point. 
and I would have probably shot down another 40 blocks or so, ending up somewhere in the harbor. But it was a fun little ride, and I appreciate the help of my friends. My little boating adventure was quite a fun time. It's dangerous and shouldn't be attempted by everybody. You should always have proper safety gear, etc., etc. And I don't know exactly what I'm going to do next. It might be something even crazier. <laughs>